Namah Shivaya students. As we were reading the story Ranga's marriage, we have noticed that Ranga seemed to be lost in thought. Perhaps he was emotionally upset to learn that the girl he had seen that morning was already married. The narrator offered to take him to Shastri to learn about the stars, whether Guru and Shani were favorable for him or not. Ranga accompanied him without any protest. So now let us read. Take out your paraphernalia. Our Rangappa seems to have something on his mind. Can you tell us what's worrying him? Shall we put your signs of astrology to the test? There was authority in my voice as I spoke to Shastri. He took out two sheets of paper, some quarries and a book of palmyra leaves, saying, Ours is an ancient science, Ayya. There's a story to it. But I won't tell you that story now. This is not a harikatha which allows you to tell a story within a story. You may get bored. I'll tell it to you some other time. So here the narrator is asking the Shastri to take out all his tools to help solve whatever is going on in Ranga's mind with full authority. Shastri took out all his essentials and told them that this is an ancient science. But he will not recite about it now because then they both would get bored. But he does intend on telling it some other time. Shastri moved his lips fast as he counted on his fingers and then asked, What's your star? Ranga didn't know. Never mind. Shastri indicated with a shake of his head. He did some more calculations before saying in a serious tone, It's about a girl. I had been controlling my laughter all this while, but now I burst out laughing. I turned to Ranga. Exactly what I had said. Who is the girl? It was your humble servant who asked the question. So we see that Shastri is moving his lips while counting quickly and he asked Ranga about his star, but he did not know. Shastri implied that it is manageable. He appeared to be doing certain calculations. After a moment, he indicated that Ranga has a girl on his mind. Even after trying his best, Shama could not control his laughter. He thus posed the question to Shastri asking about the details of the girl. Shastri thought for a while before replying. She probably has the name of something found in the ocean. Kamala, maybe. Could it be Pachi, Moss? Must it be Moss if it's not Kamla? Why not Pearl or Ratna, the precious stone? Ratna, the girl in Ramarao's house is Ratna. Tell me, is there any chance of our negotiations bearing fruit? Definitely, he said, after thinking for some time. There was a surprise on Ranga's face and some happiness. I noticed it. But that girl is married, I said. Then I turned to him. His face had fallen. So Shastri thought and thought and replied that the girl is likely to have a name of something which is found in the ocean. Their guesses include Kamala, Pachi, Moss, Pearl and then suddenly Shastri said Ratna. All of it came together now to a girl named Ratna who we all know is the niece of Ramarao. That's it. Ranga was thinking about that girl only. Ranga was both surprised and happy because Shastri's predictions were right. He immediately became disappointed when he recalled that she was married. I don't know all that. There may be some other girl who's suitable. I only told you what our Shastra indicated. Shastri said, we left the place. On the way, we passed by Ramarao's house. Ratna was standing at the door. I went in alone and came out a minute later. So Shastri said that he did not know all that and there may be some other suitable girl. To make it look more real, Shastri interfered in their name guessing game and told them that he only told what he could read. Both of them left and crossed Ramarao's door where Shama went to see Ratna for a minute 
and he came back. Surprising, this girl isn't married it seems. Someone told me the other day that she was. What Shastri told us has turned out to be true after all. But Rangappa, I can't believe that you have been thinking of her. Swear on the name of Madhavacharya and tell me, is it true what Shastri said? I do not know whether anyone else would have been direct, Ranga admitted. There's greater truth in that Shastra than we imagine. What he said is absolutely true. Students, please note that Madhavacharya was an exponent of Vedantic philosophy from South India. When the narrator comes back, he announces that fortunately Ratna is not married and someone might have wrongly conveyed it to him about that. The narrator expresses his amazement at the fact that he has been thinking about Ratna and asks him to swear upon the truth. To his surprise, Ranga told him the truth that whatever Shastri said is actually true. His belief in all the Shastras had strengthened. Shastri was at the well when I went there that evening. I said, so, Shastri Gale, you repeated everything I had taught you without giving rise to any suspicion. What a marvellous Shastra yours is. He didn't like it at all. What are you saying? What you said to me was what I could have found out myself from the Shastras. Don't forget, I developed on the hints you had given me. Tell me, is this what a decent man says? So, Shama went to see Shastri that evening when he was near the well and remarked about how well he did what Shama told him to do. Shastri seemed to not like what the narrator was saying. Thus, he says that whatever he said could be very clearly seen in the Shastras. He completely disagreed with having staged the entire conversation. Rangappa had come the other day to invite me for dinner. What's the occasion? I asked. It's Shama's birthday. He's three. It's not a nice name, Shama, I said. I'm like a dark piece of oil cake. Why did you have to give that golden child of yours such a name? What a childish couple you are, Ratna and you. I know, I know. It is the English custom of naming the child after someone you like. Your wife is eight months pregnant now. Who's there to help your mother to cook? My sister has come with her. I went there for dinner. Shama rushed to me when I walked in and put his arms round my legs. I kissed him on his cheek and placed a ring on his tiny little finger. So here we see that the narrator is taking us a few years forward when Ranga and Ratna are happily married had a three-year-old son and Ratna was eight months pregnant. Ranga's sister had come over to help them. It was Shama's birthday. The couple had named their son after the narrator as it is a common foreign tradition to name the child after someone you truly admire. When the narrator went there for dinner, Shama came running to him only to show his love by holding his leg. The narrator kissed him and gave him a ring. Allow me to take leave of you, reader. I am always here, ready to serve you. You are not bored, I hope. So here the narrator is writing an ending note to all the readers, hoping that they were not bored while reading the story. So students, as we have completed Ranga's marriage, we will discuss the main points and question answer in our next class. Thank you. Om Namah Shivaya.